Hi, it's Dwyer. June 11th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk heavyweight boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, we're hearing now that if Tyson Fury gets by Deontay Wilder, he's going to pivot and he's going to fight Anthony Joshua. It's supposed to be a two-fight deal. Understand, Tyson Fury right here is trying to close the show. He's trying to give the definitive answer on who is the best heavyweight of this era. If you go back to when Vladimir Klitschko held the title, just close your eyes for a moment and ask yourself, who have been the best heavyweights during that period? Now, I believe most people, most people, would say Vladimir Klitschko, right? Multi-year, long-time reigning champ. Anthony Joshua, who has had multiple titles. Deontay Wilder, heavyweight champion for five years has at least, at a minimum, knocked down every man he's faced in the ring. And, of course, Tyson Fury. Because Fury is the man, let's remember, who beat Vladimir Klitschko when Vladimir Klitschko was champ. And who is still the only man to beat Deontay Wilder in the ring. So if one guy in that group beats the others and can leave the stage unbeaten or at the end of the series of fights is still unbeaten, then he's the best of that group. Right now, let me just say this, and I don't say it lightly. Right? I do believe that there's some days when you have to be unpopular. I believe this fight is convenient for both Fury and for AJ. Very convenient. It ties up a lot of loose ends. Right? First, as I predicted here in an earlier video, just Google Dwyer Usyk. Neither guy has to fight Alexander Usyk, excuse me, Oleksandr Usyk, anytime soon. Right? The titles at this stage really don't matter. A sanctioning body can say to AJ, look, if you don't fight Usyk, we're going to strip you of a title. And he can say, look, I'm going to fight Tyson Fury. <laughs> He's the lineal. He's a WBC, right? I'm not running from anyone. I'm running to an unbeaten fighter who the people consider to be one of the best of this era. Right? The reality is that Usyk would give AJ a tough fight. Usyk would give Tyson Fury a tough fight. Understand. Because of this two-fight deal, everything else can be put on hold. Right? I need to have people also realize that Anthony Joshua's record against Andy Ruiz is all tied up. He doesn't have an advantage, folks. He was dropped multiple times and beaten in the first fight. He's on his back foot behind a jab moving around the ring and wins the second fight. According to my scorecard, that's 1-1. One, one. Right? I don't see the advantage that AJ has from that series. Understand, the third fight with Andy Ruiz is now on the back burner. Both Fury 
and AJ can survive press conferences with tough press corps. Right? Tyson Fury can simply say, what do you want me to do? When I signed to fight, AJ, he had multiple belts. <laughs> right? Right? We're both from the UK. We need to settle this in the ring. Right? AJ can simply say, what do you want me to do? Tyson Fury's unbeaten. He has a belt. I feel he's the biggest challenge. Right? So, it's not just Usyk. It's Marat Gassiev. It's younger heavyweights. It's Dylan White. Understand, this move ties up a lot of problems. Because a lot of guys who are dangerous are now on the back burner. Let's talk about the fight itself. Now look, I want to be clear. I'm rolling on one side of the aisle here. I don't want to sound mealy mouths. I think the fight's a mismatch. I think the fight has a very good fighter. Right? A very good fighter. In Anthony Johnson. Fighting a great fighter. In Tyson Fury. I think Tyson Fury destroys Anthony Joshua. Let's go further. You remember the fight that Fury just had against unbeaten Deontay Wilder? I think this fight might be worse than that fight. Right? That fight had the overhang of the first Wilder Fury fight, where Fury in the fight understood I make a mistake, this man has already decked me. Right, Fury understood I barely beat the count in the 12th round of the first fight. In fact, by his own admission, he's out for a few seconds. Right, out for a few seconds. Understand how perilous boxing is. If the referee Jack Reese stops the first fight, no one would have complained because Fury went down hard. We wouldn't be in this spot. We wouldn't realize that Fury, quite frankly, of this group is far and away the best. I'm expecting Fury to destroy Wilder in their third fight. Destroy him. Then I think he pivots. I just don't see how Anthony Joshua does better against Fury than Vladimir Klitschko. Let's talk about the mechanics of the fight. Understand, and this is major for this fight, You've already seen Tyson Fury dance circles around Deontay Wilder in their first fight. You remember that game plan? Tyson Fury's on his back foot. He's shooting a jab. It's the same game plan he had in his fight against Vladimir Klitschko. Right? But that was only his third fight back from a very long layoff. Well, now he's sharp. <laughs> now he's been back. Now he's not only fought Wilder a second time, he's fought people like Otto Wallen. Right? So, the first point I want to make about this fight, and if you disagree, and I know there's a multitude of you who do, tell us about it in the comment section of this video. But the first point is that Tyson Fury does not have to get close to Anthony Joshua to beat him. Simply put, like Vladimir Klitschko, when Klitschko was champion and lost his belt in the ring to Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, who's practically a Klitschko clone, doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with Tyson Fury if Tyson Fury decides to be on his back foot for a few rounds and operate behind a jab. 
Understand what foot speed and coordination does for you. Tyson Fury can show up in this fight and can just say to himself, okay, I'm going to win the first four rounds. Right? While I'm 100%, while I have the spring in my legs, I'm going to dance circles around this guy. I'm going to hit him with a jab, a jab that's superior. Much superior to AJ's jab. Right? I'm going to hit him with the jab. I'm going to dance circles around him. Just like I did in the first Deontay Wilder fight. Right? AJ is cautious by nature. He's not Mike Tyson. He's not a guy who comes in the ring and then is trying to hunt you down. No, he needs to see what's in the forest first, doesn't he? Right? He's not the guy in the Jeep who has the gun and then sees a deer or something and says, hey, over there. Then, as the car is slowing down after chasing the deer, hops out and runs into the forest after it. That's not who he is. Right? AJ's the guy who's looking at the map first, isn't he? He's the guy who sees the deer and then he's like, hey, wait, wait a moment. He's looking around. He's seeing what else is out there. I know AJ has some early knock outs. I know he does. Charles Martin, for example. Right? But look at the film. There is no Mike Tyson. Marvis Fraser. KO. He's not trying to get the guy over by the ropes like Tyson did against Michael Spinks. That's not who he is. So when you're fighting an Ali guy, a guy who comes in the ring and understand Tyson Fury has educated all of us, just like Ali did. We know he's going to come in the ring. We know he has spring in his step. We know he's going to get up on his toes. We know he's going to dance around the ring. We know he's going to tell us before the fight, this guy won't be able to keep up with me. So then when we watch the fight, we're going to be looking for whether Tyson Fury is able to outmaneuver Anthony Joshua. And we know he's going to. I'm hearing that the two guys sparred several years ago. Several years ago. Right back when Tyson Fury was having a problem with people like John McDermott. Right several years ago. Folks, come on. Give me a break. Understand that Tyson Fury today has improved his skills to the point where he can dance and fight you southpaw. Right? I, I understand they sparred. I understand that that's something that needs to be considered. Right? I'll agree with that. It needs to be considered. But the first few rounds, I think, Anthony Josh was just going to be looking at Tyson Fury exactly the same way that Vladimir Klitschko looked at Tyson Fury outmaneuver him. Right? Understand, too, when you look at films of guys fighting an Ali or a prime Roy Jones, fighters often look gun shy. Right? Vladimir Klitschko against Tyson Fury. Fighters look gun shy because the movement is married to feints. Right? Tyson Fury in the outside, he's going to be throwing a jab. He's going to be faking like he's throwing a jab. The lateral movement is going to throw a robotic mechanical fighter like Anthony Joshua off. Right? You see a guy, he's moving, he's fainting. Oh, is that real? I'm not sure. Right? Tyson Fury, for a big man, is fast. He doesn't look fast against Steve Cunningham. He's not fast against the shorter, coordinated guys. 
But against AJ, he's going to be faster than AJ. He has the faster hand speed. He has the movement. So Tyson Fury is going to enter this fight. Then he's going to jump to a lead. The crowd's going to be on his side. It's going to dawn on people a couple rounds into this fight, in my opinion, that they're watching greatness. Right? We've been through an era where you had some heavyweights who were afraid to use their legs, who didn't get on the balls of their toes and just put on an exhibition, let the crowd know, look at me. Right? As Ali famously put it, right after he beat Sonny Liston, he says, look at me, I'm as pretty as a girl. Right? We're going to get back to that. Tyson Fury in the ring, he's dancing around, then suddenly the realization is going to hit the crowd. AJ can't touch him. Right? Understand. You had that dynamic in the first Vladimir Klitschko fight, but that fight was in front of Klitschko's home crowd. That fight was in Germany. Let me also say this too. I'm Jamaican, right? If you ever see a fight from Jamaica, Foreman Joe Fraser, Jamaicans are loud, right? We're yelling. You know, people are like partying. Well, Germany's not that way. Germany's one of these engineering social order meccas, right? So, they were watching, just like Mike Tyson, <laughs> Buster Douglas, in, I believe, Japan, where, you know, people didn't know what they were seeing. And the crowd was hushed. That's the same thing that you had in the first Tyson Fury, Vladimir Klitschko, in fact, the only Tyson Fury, Vladimir Klitschko fight. The German crowd was sitting there stunned, but silent. What happens if Tyson Fury's in front of a British crowd? What happens if Tyson Fury's up on the balls of his toes and he's putting on such a show? that as guys who dance used to, he starts shuffling in the ring, right? It's like, hey, you're watching the show. This is how good the show is. I can shuffle in front of this guy. He can't do anything to me. That's the dynamic this has set up for, right? Joshua doesn't have the foot speed. Let me say this too. You see a boxing prospect right? If he is a little bit too stationary, but he's 17 years old or 18 years old, you can say, hey, player, use your feet. Get up on the balls of your feet. Right? Move a little bit. The guy can learn those skills. You're not going to learn those skills when you're up around 30. Right? It's just like language. My four-year-old speaks Mandarin. Right? I've been with her and her Mandarin teacher. I have no idea what they're talking about. Me in my 50s would have a tough time learning a language now. Well, in a boxing sense, AJ is too old to do anything about his slow foot speed. Right? He just is. Let me just say too, you know, Joe Lewis didn't have fast feet. When I say fast feet, don't get me wrong. Maybe AJ runs the 100 meters in, you know, 10.3 seconds. But that's different than how you do things, the speed you have in the ring. There's a foot speed gap in this fight, just like there was when Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko. Just like there was when Fury fought Deontay Wilder. Understand, too, in terms of avoiding a jab, I'm not recommending this for Fury because it's dangerous, but Fury could switch to southpaw. 
change the angles up. A jabber might be able to hit a guy when he's righty. Then when the guy switches to southpaw, not be able to hit him. The angles of the punches are different. Right? So understand, because of Fury's feet and because of Fury's skill set, right, AJ's jab's not going to be a factor. Right? And distance-wise, Tyson Fury doesn't have to park in the pocket to fight AJ. And that's where AJ is most effective. So, Joshua is a blessed puncher. Both hands. Right? He, his punching power reminds me of George Foreman punching power. Right? It's not a straight right hand or what have you. He can take you out with hooks. He's heavy-handed. Right? He's a heavy handed guy. Julio Cesar Chavez. Right? Heavy handed. He has a puncher's chance. No question about it. But because of the fight styles, even with his charisma, even if this fight takes place in the UK, he's going to be undressed on the judges' scorecards, right? When the judges see a knockout puncher like AJ, right? A knockout puncher, a guy who stops Vladimir Klitschko. And he can't get close to Tyson Fury. Understand, this Ali dynamic reveals itself early in fights. Right? One guy's up on his toes, he's hitting you with punches, he then starts shuffling his feet, he starts moving around the ring, and you realize he's going to have to slow down for his opponent to have a shot. Right? Once that dynamic establishes itself, even judges who are predisposed to start their scorecards at two rounds to AJ for none for Tyson Fury at the start of the first round, even those judges are going to be hesitant to give AJ any of the early rounds. Right? Let me just say too, I want people to think this one through. Right? Because I do feel that the knockdowns that Tyson Fury suffered in the first Deontay Wilder fight have clouded people's judgment. Just look at the common opponent of Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Both guys fought Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, when Tyson Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko enters the ring as the heavyweight champion. That's who he was. The underdog in the fight was Tyson Fury. Klitschko was supposed to win that fight. The location of the fight was in Klitschko's backyard. Right, folks? There's no knockdown of Tyson Fury in that fight. Tyson Fury is relatively unscathed. He could have said at the end of that fight, look at me, I'm as pretty as a girl. He's unmarked. There's no portion of that fight where we say to ourselves, how did Tyson Fury survive that round? Tyson Fury systematically undresses a reigning heavyweight champion. That performance is much more impressive than Anthony Joshua having all of us wondering how he survived the sixth round against an older Vladimir Klitschko who had been out of the ring for more than a year. Right? Think about the back and forth of that Vladimir Klitschko, Anthony Joshua fight. And of course, that fight was in Joshua's backyard. 
right? It wasn't in Klitschko's backyard. It was in Joshua's backyard. Right? Understand, too, the fifth round. Joshua drops Klitschko. What I want people to do is to look at that fifth round closely, the last 30 seconds of that fifth round. Right? We have the benefit in 2020 of YouTube. You can pull up the fight. You're going to notice that in the round where Klitschko is dropped, this is before the last round, in the round where Klitschko is dropped, you'll notice that Joshua seems to run out of gas at the end of the round. Klitschko actually has Joshua up on the ropes. Klitschko actually looks good after he gets off the canvas in that fifth round. Think about the biggest punch of that fight. The two guys are leaning on each other. Then, Joshua pivots, gets Klitschko off his shoulder, and throws a hellacious uppercut. Right? Hellacious uppercut. Right off of a pseudo clinch. Almost takes off Klitschko's head. Right? It's a dramatic moment. The problem, though, is that's a fluke punch. Joshua tries it against Joseph Parker. Revisit that fight. Joseph Parker has it blocked. <laughs> Once you figure out that a guy has an uppercut in his arsenal after he leans on you, well, as he leans on you, you can have a hand down. You can tilt your head away. Right? That's not the same as a guy methodically beating you to the punch in the flow of action, not off a clinch, as Tyson Fury did to Vladimir Klitschko when they fought. Right? So, I'm not kidding. When I say I've watched boxing a long time, talent is an odd thing. Once in a while, you're going to look at a guy and you're going to realize, you know what? This guy's a great fighter. Right? Maybe he has problems outside the rig. Maybe he's a bit crazy. Right? Maybe he's, you know, a bit different. Maybe all of that is true. But Tyson Fury is a great fighter. AJ is the kind of guy he can beat easily. Right? If he'd have a tougher fight, quite frankly, and I'm prepared to be unpopular, that's okay, he'd have a tougher fight, quite frankly, against Alexander Usyk. Right? The Cruisers. Maris Breedis, if he becomes a heavyweight, would give Fury a tougher time than a big clunky opponent who can't box with him. Right? You know Fury's the better boxer. You got a sense of AJ's boxing skills when Andy Ruiz gets off the canvas in the third round. The two guys start to trade. Folks, it's not about Andy dropping. AJ. It's about the flow that takes place before he gets dropped. And he's in the pocket and you notice AJ isn't prepared to actually flurry with a guy in the pocket. Right? He's a puncher. Excellent puncher. Both hands. He's a puncher. He's not a boxer. Now contrast that with Tyson Fury's performance in the rematch against Deontay Wilder. Right? Understand there's moments in that fight where Fury is trading with Deontay Wilder and all of the shots are long shots. In other words, he doesn't have to enter the pocket. He's literally trading it's to the point where he's making sure it's long. He lifts his left hand to measure. Right? He wants to make sure he can't get hit by a Deontay Wilder right hand from the other area code. 
right? So he's measuring Wilder. At times, he lifts up his left hand to make sure there's requisite distance. Tyson Fury's throwing power shots during the sequence without relying on hooks. Right? This is the same fighter who should have lost his title against Otto Wallen. Right? If you're going to have a ringside doctor... <laughs> And if the guy's not going to stop a fight where blood's gushing out of the cut, uh, I don't know what the doctor's doing there in the arena. But all I could say is understand, in that fight, you saw a different Fury, right? Fury's bleeding. He decides to collapse the pocket, right? It's two different fighters, but yet it's the same guy. Understand, Fury can throw combinations against Anthony Joshua without throwing hooks. Only one of these fighters has that capability. So I'm looking forward to this. Let me just say, both Wilder and Joshua have a puncher's chance on Tyson Fury. Right? Tyson Fury's been down in fights. No question about it. Steve Cunningham knocked him down. Right? He barely beats the count in that first Deontay Wilder fight. Tyson Fury can get knocked to the canvas, right? What I want people to also consider is the fact that he's unbeaten. Let's face it too. We know in our hearts that the tie on his record is completely bogus, right? He beat Deontay Wilder. If there's a fight that he should have lost, it's the first John McDermott fight. I want people to revisit that fight. Understand, back then Fury had hair. I believe he's a different fighter today, right? Much more advanced. This is a guy who, I understand, had problems outside of the ring. But it's clear, it, it's absolutely clear, that this guy stays in the gym and is continually sharpening his skills. I view the fight as a mismatch. I think Joshua, quite frankly, almost had no choice but to take this fight. Because the problem with holding multiple belts is suddenly, here's an Usyk. Right? Suddenly, crafty guys who also have Olympic gold medals show up in the division. Understand, as I make this video, Usyk unbeaten. I mentioned Gassiev, I mentioned Breedis, understand Usyk's already beaten both. The Tony Bellew crowd knows. Their guy started that fight with a lot of spirit, was ready for it, then got undressed, then got stopped. Right? If you're AJ and you've already lost to Andy Ruiz, you understand, look, if I'm going to be the best of this era, at least in the eyes of the fans, it's too much of a risk for me to fight Alexander Usyk. Let me pivot here too and get a little controversial. I'm one of the people who are also curious, very curious, about how he deals with Kubrat Pulev's jab. Understand, Pulev hurts Vladimir Klitschko early in their fight. That's Pulev's one loss. Hurts him early in that fight with a jab. Right? Pulev's jab is really a two-by-four. It's kind of like a Carlos Manzon punch. Right? He's not there to stun you. That jab hurts you. So Vladimir Klitschko had to get out of his comfort zone. Right? He leads with power shots and is able to then drop Pulev in that first round. Right? Literally ducks his head, forgets trying to jab his way in, ducks his head, throws a power shot. Well, Pulev is also someone who has worked on his game. I'm sure Pulev, more than any of us, has looked at that film repeatedly of his loss to Vladimir Klitschko. 
So I'm expecting Pulev to be prepared for the possibility that Joshua might try to throw caution to the wind and lead with power shots. Where the fight gets dicey, and I believe that's a dicey fight, is if Pulev has the opportunity to counter a Joshua power shot that misses, right? If I have questions about Tyson Fury's punch resistance, you could imagine the questions I have about AJ's punch resistance, right? If AJ doesn't know how to handle Pulev's jab, folks, that fight could be very interesting, right? To sum up, I think Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight of this era. I think he's going to prove it first against Deontay Wilder in his next fight. Then he's going to pivot. I think he destroys Anthony Joshua. It's either something lopsided on the scorecards or it might be one of these fights where first he wins a few rounds, showing us that he can move. Then he comes inside and closes the show. Right? Understand, too, Fury, and this is a big difference maker here. In fights, there's a moment between when you throw punches. Right? You'll notice that slick guys know how to lean on the back of a guy's head. They'll know how to hit a guy coming out of a clinch. Right? They'll lean on the guy and have the guy leaning on the ropes. They'll lean on a guy and force the guy to use his legs to stay upright. Tyson Fury, like George Foreman, and that's really the heavyweight to look at for this, is a master at roughing you up between punches. Right? What I want people to do is to look at Tyson Fury's last fight against Deontay Wilder. Right? Understand, I know Kenny Bayless saw it. Right? Tyson Fury is wrestling Deontay Wilder. This is while Deontay Wilder, if you believe Wilder, right, is tired because of the 40 pound suit he was wearing, the delay before the fight. Right, this is as Wilder is depleted. You'll notice on the film, and keep in mind, Wilder's a tall man, just like Fury. You'll notice Fury has Wilder's head under his uh, arm, right? Uh, he's leaning on Wilder when Wilder's over by the ropes. Right, understand, Tyson Fury has the art of mugging a guy in the pocket down to a science. Anthony Joshua does not, right? Joshua is a gifted puncher who's gotten by on crisp, clean leads and counters. So understand what happens here. Tyson Fury has several roads to success. If he comes out and dances the first few rounds and is winning them like he was, think about it now. Against Vladimir Klitschko and against Fury, the first fight. And understand, these two are two of the four guys who define this era. <laughs> right? In other words, against the best in the heavyweight division, Tyson Fury's legs are such that he can just come out and dance circles around these guys. Right? These are his peers, a reigning heavyweight champion, and, in fact, both guys were reigning at the time. And, you know, let's remember that first Wilder fight, right? Wilder doesn't catch up with Fury until round nine. The first eight rounds are an exhibition and how to dance around a reigning heavyweight champion. Vladimir Klitschko never catches up to Tyson Fury. So understand, Fury can come in, dance circles around Anthony Joshua. Then as Joshua starts to tire, just like Wilder started to tire, Fury can come inside, 
rough them up. Let's remember there's a knockdown in the Wilder fight off a body shot. A body shot. Understand, if Joshua, whose stamina is a bit questionable, starts to tire like he did in the middle of his fight against Vladimir Klitschko, Fury can come inside. It's not all about the punches. Fury can come inside and just straight start mugging the guy. How confident are you about AJ on his back foot? I know there's an AJ Nation out there. I understand it. I know they think I'm full of it here and that I've been dissing their guy for years here online and that it's an insult to the greatness of their fighter that I'm here saying that Tyson Fury, a guy from the UK, is the best heavyweight in the UK. Right? I know there's another argument out there. Go ahead and make it in the comment section of this video. But as you do, explain to us why Vladimir Klitschko wasn't able to touch Tyson Fury, but was able to knock down Anthony Joshua. Right? One of the big questions of our time in boxing in this era is why wasn't Vladimir Klitschko more aggressive when Joshua gets off the canvas in the sixth round and is done? Right? Done. Tired, dazed, confused, hurt. Done. Right? There's no such moment, folks. None. In the Klitschko Tyson Fury fight. And that's a younger Klitschko, a more active Klitschko, a championship Klitschko. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.